Okay, so um, remember the, the, the exercise that we made last time, partially at least, it was the following. So, so if, I, if I'm changing notation, please let me know. So, so I, I had a linear, linear and continuous functional on C0. And the claim was there exists a unique, uh, uh, which I, I L, L maybe. There is a unique L in L1 such that uh, we can write uh, the duality between L and X. This, this is just a notation. It means L of X. Uh, this has the expression for any x in C naught. So it is clear that, so maybe we, we will redo this now. Because last time maybe we didn't complete the proof. Um, it is clear that conversely, so th there is a remark here. So if L is in L1, then it is clear that uh, if I define L of x as uh, the right hand side, Then L is an element uh, is an element of the dual of C zero, namely, it is linear on C zero and it is also continuous, bounded. Ah, oh, thank you. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, so, the, 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 so this is easy. The statement of the exercise is exactly the converse, so that any element of C0 star can be represented as, as follows. So in some sense, so there is a map. Uh, and, uh, and moreover, maybe th there is also something else here. Moreover, moreover here, um, let me add it moreover. Uh, the norm, the dual norm, so-called, so the, du the norm of uh, L, so I, I don't write it uh, the space because it is clear from the context. So uh, the, it is equal to the, the representing vector L. So this is this is the dual norm in C zero star, and this is the norm in L small L one. Okay. Uh, Conversely, we have this, so there is a map from uh, C0 star, so let, let me call it maybe T. We, we have a map from uh, C0 star into L1. Okay. Which is uh, which is an isometry also, hmm? an isometry between C0 star and L1. OK. So I mean, this, this is a way, it's not easy to understand what is the dual of an infinite dimensional vector space. This results say that uh, uh, there is a way to realize the dual. If you want, if it is necessary, the dual of C0 can be seen as elements of L1. And the duality is just the integral. So uh, the notation, so, uh, so, so we, we, 
we try to prove this once more. Okay. So we take uh, the elements E1, E2, EI equals 0, 0, I, 0, uh, 1, sorry, 0, 0, etc., where 1 is the IT element uh, position. So this is EI is an element of L1 with norm 1, of course. And then we introduce a notation, I think that was X, uh, M. Uh, well, was XM. Uh, XM was just X1, XM, 0, 0, etc. For any X in C0. Okay? So I just take the first uh, M components of the uh, vector X in C0. Okay? This was the notation. And the, 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 the convergence in C0 implies that the limit as m goes to plus infinity x minus xm is equal to 0. OK? This is simply because uh, on C0, we have the sup norm. And therefore, this is nothing else the sup because this is clearly is the supremum, OK, bigger than m, uh, of uh, x minus x, k, uh, x, uh, sorry, it is simply the supremum of this, OK? So this is just since uh, uh, c0 consists of sequences which are um, infinitesimal, this obviously goes to 0. Okay. Therefore, this, the, uh, this says that XM converges to X in the, in the right, uh, in the right uh, topology. <clears throat> and therefore, now L is continuous. And therefore, L of X, M, L of XM converges to L of X, SM. So we know this. Now we introduce the notation. I think it was L, it, it was, so notation LK is just L of EK. This was the notation, I think, I hope. Okay. Uh, so continuity of L implies this. Now this is equal to L sum on k to 1 to m uh, xk uh, k. <coughs> now we use linearity. Uh, and therefore, this is equal uh, now L of ek was um, decade, denoted by LK, so this is equal to LK XK. Okay. Hmm. So this this uh, we have that this object converges to this, uh, and therefore there is, there exists the limit of this uh, this finite sum. So there exists the limit, uh, and so there exists. Uh, the limit uh, that we usually, of course, denote by this. Uh, and this is equal to L of x. Okay. Okay, so um, what remains to show is that, uh, uh, so we have shown just this. But we have not yet uh, the, the fact that this is an element in this space. So we have to show of course that L is bounded, uh, but also that small l il, uh, is in L1. No?
Okay, then L of X uh, is surely less than or equal uh, than the supremum of X, okay? So L of X actually is clearly less than or, or equal than the infinity norm of X times <coughs> some Okay. Okay. So uh, this is uh, equal to. Okay. This we we still don't know. Okay. This is maybe the second part. So we still don't know that this is finite. So l let us first show that this is finite by choosing properly uh, the. <coughs> so this is true for any x. Uh, this is true for any x, and so now I can choose a special x. And as we saw last time, one can take uh, special x, choose x in the following way. So one, one take just the sign. So one, one wants to make this an absolute value of lk. So just take xk equal. Uh, say the sign of LK X, uh, uh, so if one less than K less than N and zero else. Okay. So one gets in this way. Maybe I don't remember if I use this symbol. Maybe uh, now I see that here there is another symbol. I don't remember. Why? Maybe? maybe? I don't know. Huh? Why? Sorry. Uh, sorry. So last time was YN. So probably so it was capital N maybe. Why NK? This? So sorry. Okay. This, this is less than N. And so this is just the, the, the symbols that I used last time. Okay. So for any for any capital N, so choose x equal to y n in in this expression. And so what do I find? I find that L of y n So this is just the sum up to capital N. up to capital N, then I have the absolute value of LK. Okay. Uh, then this is less than or equal to by definition of the norm of L. And then uh, I have the norm of YN. But YN is just plus 1 if this is positive, minus one, if this is negative, and therefore the, the C0 norm, the L infinity norm of Yn is one. Okay, so this is equal to. And so this shows that for any capital N, this finite sum is always bounded by a number. Uh, well this, this number is of course finite. Eh? So for any capital N, this sum is bounded by the same number independent of N. And therefore, the whole infinite sum, uh, and therefore, we deduce that uh, the, this is less than or equal to N. Okay?
uh, we have therefore the inequality uh, that so so we have that small uh, this uh, this element here is in L1. Uh, so this inequality implies that this is in L1. Not only this, but it also implies that clearly the L1 norm of L is less than or equal than L. Okay. Now, um, this inequality say exactly the opposite. Okay. This implies this inequality, now this is finite, this inequality says exactly the opposite. So it says that uh, because if you remember the definition of uh, this norm is the supremum of this number divided by this norm. Okay, so this, is, this divided by this is always less than for any x. So we have exactly the converse inequality, and this concludes the proof of this uh, exercise. Okay. So this was the exercise, and uh, mm, and uh, quite similar, maybe the same proof actually. So maybe I don't I don't want to repeat it, but let me write down the the, the result maybe, and, and also I hope that I still I am using the same symbol of last lecture. So maybe it was this G. I don't know G. <coughs> So, so assume that G is an element, is continuous, is, is linear and continuous on L1. Then there exists a unique uh, D D, maybe? D, yes. In an infinity. This was the letters. These were the letters. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, such that g of y is equal y k d k for any y in L1. And conversely, of course, if you have an element in L infinity, huh? so if you have given d, and you define capital G as follows, then it is clear that capital G is an element, is continuous and linear on L1. And this, this statement says also the converse, the difficult part, that any element of the, any linear continuous function on L1 can be represented as follows, okay? So th there is always a, a, an easy, a ah, remark that is uh, the converse of this is easy, and the difficult part is that is that what is written here. Hoping that I am using the same symbols. Okay. Uh, and also we have the isometry, namely that uh, the norm of G is equal to the norm of D. So this is exactly the same kind of statement. And so observe that, uh, so we have found the map from C0 star into L1. And we have found the map now from L1 star into L infinity. Huh? And so we have a map actually from C0 star star, no, sorry, C0 star star and uh, and l infinity hmm? okay. okay so uh,
the proof is essentially the same. So did you try to, to do this, such a kind of proof? Did I, did I leave this as an exercise last time? Last time? Yes. Did you try it? I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly the same proof. Huh? The same proof, just only the, the only difference is that uh, uh, still you have that convergence, so still you have this. Huh? Because uh, what do you have here? Well, uh, the, 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 the difference is that if still this is true, of course this is not, this must be replaced, that must be replaced now by the norm. So the norm is now the L1 norm, okay? It's not anymore the L infinity norm, but it is the L1 norm. So here we have Y, YM, and we have uh, now that uh, the norm of the difference is just uh, the sum from K to M plus one infinity y k and and therefore since uh, y is an element of l1 this uh, infinite sum converges and so this is the tail which goes to zero okay so so this tail goes to zero and so this as this assertion is still true and so once you have this you have this Uh, and and uh, similarly, you can set maybe this, call this DK now, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you, with proper change of the norms, so you still define DK as follows. And you redo the proof, essentially, with the proper changes, okay? Fine, so. <clears throat> So we have some experience now on Banach spaces, and what I would like to tell you today is start <coughs> the sorry, start the the theory of Hambanach theorems. I don't know if we will do all the proofs. If you want to check the details, you can go through the reference of Brezis book on functional analysis. Um, uh, Brezis book is, I think, uh, functional analysis and partial differential equations, maybe or Sobolev spaces and partial differential equations. It's a big book of Springer. Now, it's a new version much bigger than the previous one, okay? Yeah, there are other, other books of Brazil, but this is, say, book, uh, the new version is maybe three years ago, very recent, okay? Okay, so let, let, me, uh, let me give you now the statement. So the, we start from a, an important chapter of um, functional analysis. Uh, which are the theorems of Am 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 Banach, which have a lot of applications uh, in the whole, in the whole uh, theory. Uh, but please remember that we want, at some moment, we have, we, we have to go through the Fourier transform and, and other things. And so we cannot really uh, dedicate too, too many time to this kind of uh, very, very important results. So I, maybe I will skip some something. Okay, so uh, let me use the following notation. So, uh, so I give you first a statement, which is a sort of statement where topology uh, takes no role. So there is a statement essentially in set theory. So, and, and so I give you a statement without topology and I use the following symbols maybe. Um, Uh, assume that this is a vector space. Uh, 
uh, vector space, uh, and then take a subspace. So let theorem. Let he be a vector space, and then let G be a subspace. Subspace. Then assume that we have, uh, assume that, let me use the symbol uh, G. Assume that G from G into R satisfy the following, satisfies the following. So G is linear. And G is less than or equal P, uh, where P from E to R has the following properties. The following properties the following properties are p of x plus y less than or equal than p of x plus p of y for any y x and y into uh, e so this is point 1 and point 2 is p lambda x equal lambda p of x for any x in e in lambda in r. Hmm? Maybe the Brazis book is, is something less than this, so let me make something weaker. Okay, do this. Okay, and then there exists F from E to R, <coughs> F linear, F equal to uh, G on a G and F less than or equal than P on P. So let, let, let me try to explain first this statement. So in this statement, first of all, there is no, uh, no topology, hmm? just uh, linear maps linear maps or something less maybe than linear uh, on vector spaces. Hmm? So there is no continuity assertion here. Hmm? I am not saying that this is continuous, then G is continuous, F is continuous, and so on. Um, then we have a, a small G, yes, small G, which is less than or equal than something, and this something is defined everywhere on the ambient space. Huh? And it is almost a semi-norm. Okay? So remember why this is not exactly a semi-norm, it's slightly less. Essentially because as I so if I if I want a semi-norm, the, 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 the definition remember was uh, okay, sublinearity, homogeneity, but with the absolute value here for any lambda in R. And then also that P was uh, taking non-negative values, which actually was a consequence. You remember, there was, I left you an exercise maybe, that once you have uh, a stronger form of two, then uh, automatically P takes non-negative values. Do you remember? 
So with this kind of statement, for the moment, there is no reason for which p takes non-negative non values. So it's slightly less than, OK. Uh, then the assertion says that uh, there, is ex there exists an extension of small g. What does it mean? It means that there is a new function defined in the ambient space, so also at sa outside capital G, so defined everywhere, keeping linearity, OK? So of course, here, so linear, linearity is important. We are doing linear functional analysis. G is a linear space. G, small g is a linear map on the linear space G. And f is a linear map on the linear space E. Uh, so f is equal to g on the small space. So that it is an extension, is a linear extension. And the difficult part is to prove that uh, um, it keeps the bound. So it's not any linear extension. But if initially, in the small space, uh, so this inequality is valid only in small g. I, I have not written it because it is clear, because g here is defined only on capital G. So this is clear that it's valid only on g. But then this becomes valid on the whole space. So it is an extension keeping some constraint. So the remarks maybe are, there is for the moment no continuity assertions here, just linearity, but there is a bound. Uh, and and the, 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 maybe the difficult part is, and also there is no claim on uniqueness. Actually, there is no uniqueness. This, is, this just says that there exists one. But in general, there are very many many possible extensions, OK? Um, so may, may, maybe before proving this, uh, before proving this, I, I would like to make some remarks. So this is actually a very abstract statement, first of all, very, very abstract. Indeed, it is, it is related to set theory. It's related to set theory. <coughs> it is implied by the act, um, Zorn's lemma. Uh, maybe, it is, I don't know exactly, maybe. So it is implied, I, I know it is implied by Zorn's lemma. Uh, I don't think it implies Zorn's lemma, but anyway, I don't know. So, um, so what happens if I put, if I make this really a seminorm? So if P is a seminorm, is a seminorm, semi norm, then notice that I have that minus g of x uh, is equal to g is linear. Eh? So g of minus x. So if, if I have this, then this is less than or equal than p of minus x, which is equal to minus 1 p of x, which is equal to p of x. Hmm? So if G is a seminorm, which means that this is a, uh, written in the stronger form by putting the, the absolute value here and by removing uh, this uh, constraint, then I, I also have not only from this, I also have that, and so, uh, so I find that G is less than or equal than p. Okay. Now, uh, 
Let me do some, maybe some first consequences of this before doing the proof in the order, uh, in the order. So, uh, corollary. Okay, so assume that uh, E is normed. So I assume something more. Now I insert the topology in the statement. So I assume that E is normed. And then as you take now G, G as before. Eh? Uh, but not only this, assume that G is continuous. Hmm? Linear, of course, linear and continuous. So linear, continuous, this is a subspace, okay. Then there exists uh, F from E to R, uh, which, is, uh, which is lightly more because it's linear and continuous. F linear and continuous. Then f is equal to g, f to g on g, and then it keeps the bound. Okay. On e. Okay. Okay. So this is an extension. So there is continuity here inside. So actually, therefore, f, f is an element of a star. Huh? So it's a linear and continuous map. And also, uh, I don't increase the norm. That is the element, the norm of uh, f is, is the, the norm of g. Hmm? So, uh, so which is the, the remark? This is another statement. Now we have continuity. So uh, G in particular is supposed to be continuous. Then there is an extension, which is continuous, and therefore is an element of, uh, of the dual of E. Uh, and, uh, and we have norm preserving extension. So this is norm preserving extension. I don't increase the norm. Norm preserving extension. Okay. So now let us prove the corollary as a consequence of the Hambanak that I wrote before. Uh, sorry, there is, there is here. There is, sorry, this this statement is not present. Eh? So this is the statement. Okay, I have to find p in order to apply. So the proof. Look for p. So that I can apply Hambanak. So that I can, we can apply, we can apply Hambanak. And uh, the P of X <coughs> is not difficult because uh, I define P of X as follows. Uh, I have uh, G its norm, so I have G star, and then I take the norm. 
Hmm? P of x. This is my definition of P of x. Now I have to check that this P of x satisfies the assumption of Van Banach. Hmm? Well, so P is, uh, is actually more than a semi-norm. Uh, so P surely satisfies, uh, satisfies one, two, in the stronger form also. Uh, satisfies one and two. Not only, but we, all, we, we, we also have in the stronger form, uh, because this is a norm and not only a semi-norm. Uh, and not only actually less than a semi-norm, it's more than a semi-norm. And also uh, we have uh, uh, that, uh, um, we have to check that G is less than or equal than P on, on the domain of uh, small g, and this is clear, right? Because we always know that G of x is less than this product. This is, this is immediate by the definition, from the definition of uh, G star norm. So this is immediate. Hmm? Okay. Then we can apply Han Banach. So Han Banach says that there exists Hence, we can apply a Banach. Which gives us F from E to R uh, linear, satisfying F of x less than or equal than norm of G, G star X for any X in E. So because we, we keep the bound. So F on the whole set E on the whole vector space is less than P. So this is written here, F less than P everywhere. So it is linear, uh, and not only this, but also this. Huh? Right? So not, not, so, so not only this, but also with the absolute value. This is because this, this is really a norm. Eh? There is the absolute value. So this says eh, that F is linear, and it also says that the, the, the norm of F is less than or equal than the norm of G. Hmm? OK? Because f of x divided by x, take the supremum with respect to x, and you end up with this. And this is always less than this number. Is it clear? So the proof is simply look for the correct p in order to apply on Banach, OK? Um, so P is this. Uh, we can apply on Banach, and we have this. So P is not only linear, but it's also bounded, because this is finite by, us, by assumption, because G was bounded on G. So, this was finite. In particular, also, this is finite. Uh, and therefore, f is bounded is linear and bounded. And uh, well, so the norm is this. But the, the, opposite uh, the opposite inequality is immediate. So it is immediate on the other hand. So this is the difficult part. But showing this is immediate. Hmm? Is this clear? 
Mm? So linear extending G so there exists F linear continuous extending G and with the same norm. Okay. So this is maybe the, the form in which we usually find the, the Han Banach theorem. Huh? So it's less abstract in some sense. And uh, so this is the first corollary. Uh, another corollary. So corollary. Still in the topological, in the continuous version, in the, in the topological version. So let uh, x not be in E. Then there exists such that f not x not remember the notation and this is simply by notation it means this this is actually equal to f not x not Or if you want, uh, and uh, hence uh, also equal f not square and also equal x not square. F not x not. Ah, excuse me. Yes, sorry. Sorry, sorry. So remark, uh, so in this way, so we have found, if this is true, uh, assuming, for instance, uh, to normalize things, so remark, if this is true, uh, assume to normalize things so that uh, x0 is in the unit ball, uh, Then F not is also in the unit ball. And we have found a map from the unit ball, uh, so the map taking X not into F not. So there is a map from the unit ball of E into the unit ball of the dual. Sort of, du uh, of duality map, say, between this and this. Okay.
Now, this map is not, so I mean, there is no claim that F0 is unique here. So given X0, there can be several F0 in general. So th this is a multi-valued map. Take a point here into several, possibly many points. Huh? And also there is no claim that this map capital T is linear. Here there is, it is not written that capital T is a linear map. So it, 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 is an, it associates to a point in the unit ball, another point in the other unit ball, uh, and, uh, but this map is not necessarily linear uh, and not necessarily uh, it, it, it can be multiple valued. In some cases, it becomes single valued, and in some cases, it becomes linear also. What, what? It is true. Okay, this is a remark which is not so not so easy. Um, what happens to this corollary in Hilbert space in in, in, in R two in R two with the with the with the Hilbert norm? In that case, this but also in Hilbert, you are right. It becomes a linear map. <coughs> And also, uh, so in that case, somehow, uh, you have your unit ball, your point x naught, and then somehow, you, you associate to this point x naught in the unit ball uh, in, in R2, say. Uh, you associate this uh, tangent uh, line, uh, which is up to a factor. It, it, it uh, somehow identifies a linear map as a kernel. Um, and then in R2, if you identify this, with its, with its unit normal, one of the two, say, unit normal, then uh, then I mean you have you can say that uh, you can put this point x naught to another point here, which is this direction. So I mean you have a point on the unit ball. So take the tangent this is normalized eh? because this is the unit ball. Then, then you take, take the tangent here, and this is this is a linear is an affine space. But if you if you translate it at the origin, it is a linear space. Then it, this is uh, um, the kernel of a linear map. And if you normalize properly, this becomes a linear map with norm one. Now you can identify this, this plane with its unit normal in the Euclidean sense. So if you do this identification, at the end you have a map taking, and then you normalize properly this, this normal. The direction is the unit Euclidean normal. Then you normalize it properly. So at the end you have a map taking a point here into another point somewhere here. Huh? And so at the end, you have a map taking this convex set into this convex set. So you are defining Gauss map? Uh, not exactly, because the Gauss map is, is the map uh, uh, from a surface into S2, in S, into S1. I mean, just uh, the, the, the normal. So it's, it's more general in some sense. Because this is not any surface. This is just a unit ball, convex object. So the Gauss map take a point on the surface and 
on the embedded surface and are associated to it the unit normal. Uh, this is different in the sense that this is just a way to put in correspondence the two unit balls, the ball of uh, E and the ball of the dual somehow. Uh, and what I was, uh, however, there is, I mean, this identification hyperplane unit normal, which is always hidden somehow, in, at least in finite dimension. Because it is always difficult to, uh, to, to, to think what it is a linear map. I mean, how can I draw it? <laughs> so maybe if I think as a linear map as a, its kernel and proper normalization, then at least I have a hyperplane, which is the kernel. Now, the kernel can be identified, since it is co-dimension one, in finite dimension, it can always be identified with, with the normal. So you have a normal, you have a tangent. You have a tangent, you have a normal. You can identify. So at the end, after this identification, I can write a map between these two. Uh, and this, uh, if these are ellipses, actually becomes a linear map. Uh, of course, the problem uh, is when uh, your convex set is not an ellipse, maybe a square or something else, and then that, that, that becomes nonlinear and always also multivalued. So, but I don't want to say much because this, just, just to have some idea, uh, take this statement if you want. And uh, so, Okay. So let us try to prove the corollary. So we want to apply on Banach. So there is, for the moment, there is no vector, space, vector subspace, and we define it. So we choose a vector subspace, just one dimensional. So what? Do, so we, we we find. So we, we have we just we have only x naught. We want to apply Ambanak. So we need the capital G, right? Because Ambanak uh, had the capital G inside the big ambient space. So I have x naught. So I just take the span of x naught. This is the span, okay? And then I just, I have, so I have defined this, okay? And then I have small g to define small g. Professor, what is if x not is zero? Well, if x not is zero, then f not is zero. So there is nothing to say. I mean, this is true. Everything is true. So it is the, 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 so we can assume, right? So assume that if x naught is zero, then f naught is zero, and it's okay. So assume that x naught is non-zero. In this case, we can take the linear span of x naught, which is a line in the infinite in, in the in the vector space E, maybe infinite dimensional vector space E. Okay. Now I just have to define G from G to R. So any element of capital G can be written as uh, some number lambda times x naught. And therefore, I simply define equal lambda. And uh, in this way, in this way, I also have that, uh, so G must be linear, uh, G must be linear, of course, G is a linear space, G must be linear, so let me compute the norm of G. Hmm? So the norm now, now we have to understand why. So this is equal to the supremum of G 
lambda x naught such that uh, such that lambda x naught is less than or equal than 1 okay okay So this becomes equal. So I can put equality here, x not equal to 1 over lambda, right? Because in the same, uh, I can put x not. So this is, means x not equal 1 over lambda. And therefore, if x not is equal 1 over lambda, this is equal to x not. Hmm? So this, this explains the reason for which we put x naught squared for the moment, OK? Huh? So the supremum you take, x, this is the equality. So lambda in absolute value is equal to 1 over x and x naught. So we have this. Excuse me. OK. So this, this gives us the norm of g, OK? Now we can apply. Now we can apply uh, the the corollary that I have. The first corollary. This is corollary two. So I have erased color, corollary one. So let us apply now corollary one. Uh, so that from corollary one of Ambanak. From corollary one. we find that there exists f into a star which keeps the norm and extend g extending g keeping the norm but the norm of g is x naught and so the norm of f naught is equal to x naught Okay. So I think that this is enough because uh, f of a kno uh, at x naught at x naught f of x naught is equal to g of x naught because this, this is an extension. And so this means lambda equal 1. So this is x naught squared. Uh, so, so, sorry, uh, let me call f equal to f naught. So f and f naught are the same. Eh? OK, so this is f, sorry, this is f naught. Eh? Let me call it f naught. OK, so uh, f, of f naught of x naught is equal to g of x naught because f extends g, and on capital G, they are the same. G, g, small g of x naught is x naught squared. So we have this equal to this. And moreover, uh, these are obvious because we have, we have this, this relation. OK? Now, I would like to make an exercise now before continuing. And we still have to prove the, the theorem of Van Banach, but still, I think that we need an exercise. So I raise this. So let us do together. 
this exercise. A take take uh, so let us so we have now we have uh, the the Banach space uh, small l one. We have the the, the, the it is clear that uh, capital L is linear. Let us check that capital L is continuous. Let us compute the norm of capital L. Huh? And so the, the exercise is the following. One, L is continuous. Two, compute the norm of L. Three, uh, so the norm of L, remember, is the supremum Supremum of L of X such that X is less than or equal than 1. And then the point is that to show that, um, that uh, is, not, is not attained. The supremum is not attained. The supremum in two is not a thing. What does it mean? It means that. Uh, It means that there exists no x in the unit ball such that, well, so there exists no x in the unit ball such that L of x is equal. Which means that this is not a maximum. This is the meaning of uh... Okay, so is this continuous? Yes, because this bound is this bound. Okay, so let us check. L of x is less than or equal than the integral dx, which is less than or equal than the in since t is less than one, uh, which is L of x. Okay, and this implies. If you agree that this is less than or equal than one, hmm? okay. So L is bounded. Now we want to find the norm of L. Remember that the definition is this. So we know that the norm is less than or equal than 1. Is the norm equal to 1 or not? Yes. Why? Will, will such kind of sequence XM, uh, which is around 1, and this is bigger than 1 minus that one Can you repeat, repeat, please? Now we will do such kind of sequence in L1, 0, 1. In L1, 0, mm -hmm. uh, it is defined around 1. 
OK. So let us take xn equal to 0 if, uh, say, uh, and say now I want it to be norm 1. So I take 1 minus 1. OK, so we are taking. function so this is 1 this is 1 minus 1 over n this is n so what up so this what up so this 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 uh, uh, is uh, so the L1 norm of this uh, map, this function is just uh, one. Okay, because this is height n and this is one over n. So the product is one. <coughs> So it, it is in the unit ball. Hmm? So we can use it to test this supremum and see whether this is a maximizing sequence. What does it mean? It means that uh, to look whether L of xn converges to the supremum. One, in this case. Uh, so. Uh, we have to compute an integral, I think. So L of xn is uh, the integral from 0 to 1 of t xn of t. t. Now, this is the characteristic function. So this integral concentrate is, it is always 0 in between uh, 0 and 1 over n. So the integral is just in between 1 minus 1 over n and 1. Huh? T xn of t. But now we recall that xn is equal to n. So therefore, this is a constant that goes outside the integral, in this interval. OK? So this is equal to. n integral 1 minus 1 over n and 1 t dt. Uh, so this is what? n. And then we have t squared over 2, uh, 1, 1 minus 1 over n. Namely, it is n times uh, n over 2, say, times 1 minus 1 minus 1 over n squared. Hmm? Which goes to 1. as n goes to infinity. You compute, you have 1 minus 1 plus 2 over n minus 1 over n squared. So uh, this is multiplied by n over 2. So you find uh, this is equal to uh, 1 minus 1 over 2n, which converges to 1. Huh? Is it OK? Uh, so what does it mean? It means that uh, uh, so L of xn uh, tends to 1, but we also have uh, 
and that one is larger than L, and so, uh, and so, L is equal one. Okay. So we have found uh, the norm of the operator of the functional. So the functional is bounded and its norm is l equal one, is equal one. Okay? One. Is it okay? Uh, now the the difficult part is uh, that uh, is it true or not that so that there is a, there is one at least one maximizing function. So is it possible to say, so the point is, so we have now, so we have, now we have to answer question three. So question three says, is it possible that there exists or not a function x, a function x with norm one uh, such that this is one. So, uh, Do you agree that this is the question? Is it clear? The statement, statement of the question, is it clear? So, I mean, you have to solve a, ma a maximum, a supremum problem to find the norm, right? The norm is the supremum of such and such. Modulus of this. Modulus of. Ah, yes, yes, sorry. This is, okay. Okay, no. This is the, the question, okay? Mm. So I was saying, uh, the, uh, you, you want to find the norm of an operator, of a functional in this case, scalar valued. Okay. And uh, to find the norm, you have to solve a maximum problem, supremum of something and something. The point is, there exists a maximizer such that the supremum is a maximum. That is the question. So there is a... The, it, what do you think? It seems difficult because uh, you see. Assume that now that uh, that x is positive, so for some reason. You can take positive part and negative part, and you can somehow do with this. Yes, but just for simplicity, just to argue, let's argue for simplicity. Assume that you, you look for a positive x. Then it seems very difficult that this is true, right? Because you want that. So if assume for simplicity that x is positive, then you have that this should imply this. But you are multiplying by a factor. So if this is one, it's an integral. Okay. But you are multiplying by, by a factor which is always less than one. So it seems impossible, right? That if this is one, then this is one. If this is one, then this must be smaller than one, not to equal one. This is more or less the so. And so this seems to be the answer. Seems to be no, and indeed the answer should be that there is there exists no no such an x. Uh, maybe. Um, I can leave you this as a homework for tomorrow, okay? And, and we will do, as the first time of tomorrow, we will do in class this, this part, okay? So home for tomorrow morning is point three. Prove that sort of this inequality.
Um, it is a con now we will see exactly in which sense, yes. Exactly. So to continue, uh, maybe uh, an, uh, another remark before continuing the list of corollaries, maybe another exercise actually. So exercise. Um, I, was, I, I said that in general the extension, the Ambanak gives you an extension, but not, not uniqueness. In general, uniqueness is not true. It's not true even in the strongest form when you have uh, the continuity Ambanak, the, the, the topological, say, version of Ambanak theory. So you don't have uniqueness. So, so let us consider the following the following um, the linear span of uh, and now let me call this uh, yes the linear span if one the n etc. What does it mean, this, this? This means these are finite linear combinations of, of elements, finite linear combinations. The, the, the word finite is, is important. Okay? It's not infinite sum. It's just finite linear combination of, element, of, of these vectors. Uh, so any of these vectors, say, is in L1, for instance. And so also the linear span is still in L1. Hmm? OK. And then take G, for instance, uh, the span of the first one. So R E1. Hmm? And G of. Uh, G of lambda uh, E1, say, is equal to lambda. OK. Then, this is linear. This is continuous, all right? Huh? And, uh, uh, well, this is a linear continuous map functional on G. OK, now home, compute the norm, uh, show that, uh, so now we, 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 we want to extend, so we know that there is an extension. Let us try to find several extensions. So fj of ei equal to one if i is equal to uh, e one j zero is different from one and j huh? so let us consider this and extend it by linearity extended by linearity on the span of E1, EN. So these are linear. Of course, these extend an extension of G. So there are infinitely many extensions of G, if this is true. I mean, this is, this is an for any J, this is an extension of, of small G. So these are linear extension, but we have to show that they are continuous. So um, show the most difficult part is that uh, fj 
star is equal to uh, actually so this is equal to one and this is also equal to okay. so what does it mean so I have a vector space capital E I have a linear a subspace, capital G, and a linear continuous map on capital G with norm 1. What I'm saying is that there are infinitely many extensions keeping the norm. Linear extension, linear and continuous extension keeping the norm. Huh? So if this is true, it is clear that um, um, Banach cannot give you uniqueness, but just one extension. So we will do this exercise tomorrow again. And then we will continue with the corollaries of Ambanak and then the proof of Ambanak and so on.